now on Fixing the Money Thing. So as I said, there's five laws in the book I'm talking about. So I'm just going to touch on the first one and we'll dig into it. The first law is when you're sowing, find some of what you need to sow. So for instance, we see in the Bible that fish become, when you sow fish, they become fish, right? And when bread, it multiplies to what? Bread and oil multiplied to oil. All right. So we know that what you sow, sow corn, you get corn. Now there's a process to this. So let's imagine that you hand a guy who knows nothing about farming or anything, you hand him a bag of corn. What, what would he do with it? Yes, he'd eat it. And so if you don't understand the process of sowing and reaping, you'll eat your seed. But when you're confident, like a farmer is, you would say, wait a minute, that corn is valuable not to eat, but to provide all that I can eat. And when you understand the process, you see it changes your whole perspective of giving. This is why we're going to cover this. So find of what you need. What do you need? You can sow it. Let's say you need fish, you would sow fish, right? Let's say that you don't have fish and you want fish, what would you sow? Money is a bartering system. You see, you name money every day. You name it food, bread, milk, gasoline, car, whatever. You name money, and now you could take the money and buy the fish and then sow the fish, but you can just name money. You can just name it as you sow it and name it fish and sow money. And you can reap. Now, sowing and reaping is a vital part of a farmer's future. He can decide himself how big the harvest will be. He can actually become very wealthy using that law. And these laws of the kingdom are there for your benefit. You can learn how to use them and walk in them. I remember years ago, we had a, uh, when I first met Drenda, I had a Kawasaki 1000. And uh, we had our first dates on this bike. And I lived in an apartment. We weren't married yet. I walked out one day and it was gone. It was stolen. So, then we got married. Didn't have the money, of course, raising kids. And I decided that I'm going to sew through the years for a motorcycle. And I put, whenever I sewed, when I have a garage. I didn't want a good garage. I didn't want a great motorcycle out in the rain. And I didn't want to have it out where people could steal it any longer. But later, when I had a great garage, I could have a motorcycle. So people would say, you should have put that first. Believe for, <laughs> believe for the garage and the motorcycle. But anyway, I didn't do that. But anyway, so through the years, my pastor in Tulsa, he loved to ride motorcycles. And I would always give him a check. Even when I moved here, I'd send a check in the mail every year to him and, uh, for his gas. I'd say, here's your, what, three or $400 I sent for your gasoline, for your summer riding on your motorcycle. And I always put on the check for my Honda ST1100 uh, Honda ST motorcycle. That was what I was believing to receive. And so I did that for a number of years. And uh, then, uh, you know, waiting, and finally got a garage. But I remember we didn't have a nice garage. But during that season, I remember Drenda did buy me a, a motorcycle. Todd, right here on the second row, was so kind to give it to her at a losing price for you, gaining price for us. But you sewed into us, and I appreciate that. But he made it very affordable at that time. We didn't have much money. But we rode that for a little while and gave it to our worship leader. And uh, so I kept sewing. And through those years, I sewed uh, to my worship leader. I sewed to an assistant, uh, three staff members, basically. And I remember one time uh, a motorcycle was given to me in, in church, and I turned around and gave it away. You say, why would you give it away? Because, listen, this is very important. It wasn't my harvest. See, harvest has a very distinct picture. So when I received that motorcycle, I was very grateful, but it wasn't the harvest. It was my seed. So you've got to know the difference. God gives seed to the sower. So yes, well, the, this motorcycle showed up. Yes, but it's not my harvest. It's my seed. And so after we got our garage built. Of course, then, then someone gave me a brand new ST. Uh, it was a 1300. The 1100 was discontinued. They made a little bigger engine on it. And you missed it last night. We gave that one away last night to a, another staff member. But a few weeks ago, a few months ago, of course, I had said that uh, through the years I've been riding Harleys with Pastor Peter in New Zealand and all over and uh, began to kind of like those. And I said, everyone say said, I'd like to have a Harley. And so I've sewn, you know, motorcycles, and we received a brand new Harley a couple months back, uh, ultra-limited, brand new 2020 model, paid for, I like that. And so 
very distinct, and you've been around long enough to know and hear my stories, that when I talk about sowing and reaping, the reaping's always very specific, right? Always very specific, and it's not by accident. We're going to talk about this again. Mark chapter 6, verse 35 is a story you've heard. Uh, it talks about uh, the bread multiplying. Verse 35, by this time it was late in the day. So his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. It's already very late. Let's send the people away so they can go you know, buy, get some food. And he said, you give them something to eat. Great, that's good, that's good. They said to him that would take more than half year's wage. And then he, in verse 38, says something very strange. How many loaves do you have? He asked, go and see. Now, do you think Jesus thought for a moment that there was enough bread there to feed those 5,000 men, children and women, probably 15 to 20,000 people. Do you think he was asking them to go verify if they had enough food to feed all those people? Help me out. No, that wasn't his intent. He was looking for the exact seed that needed to be sown for an exact harvest. If someone would sow that seed, go and check and see, and let's find the seed that can become the harvest that we need. And someone gave that to Jesus. Now, you've been here a long time, and we've taught you that when Jesus took that bread and fish, something happened to the bread and fish. What happened? It changed kingdoms, changed jurisdiction, because he did this. He, he, he took it. when he, They said, we have five loaves and two fish. He said, give it to me. Then the Bible says he blessed it, or he, he gave thanks and gave it right back. Jesus does nothing religious. As a spiritual scientist, Drenda and I began to look at all the stories in the Bible and began to ask, why did he do that? Something happened there legally because we learned that the kingdom was a government that had laws. So we know that all these stories illustrated the laws of the kingdom. Jesus would say, the kingdom of God is like. We'd write it down, check it out. Why was this person healed? Why wasn't that person healed? How did that bread show up? Why'd those fish multiply? You say, oh, Pastor Gary, that's easy. That's because it's Jesus. Well, then why did he say the same things you see me do, you'll do in even greater things? You see, he was operating as the son of man, not the son of God. Under that Old Testament covenant. Anointed by God. So we as believers need to ask, why is that story in the Bible? It's to show us how the kingdom operates so you can do the same thing. But you've got to ask the question, and the first thing we understood is, once we understood it was laws, then we began to ask, the, see, most Christians beg and cry and carry on because they don't realize it's laws. They think God chose to do it. But, you know, if I said, hey, God chose to hold gravity in place today, you think I'm nuts. Gravity works every time, right? Let's pray that gravity works today on the way to church. <laughs> You would think if I, if I opened every service that way, let's pray that the chairs stay on the ground today, folks. Remember last week, sister so-and-so, right out through the roof, man. We got to pray. <laughs> right? <laughs> you would think I'm nuts. You don't even think about gravity because it's a law. It never changes. These laws never change. And they're illustrated in these stories so you can ask the question, how did that happen? So we need to find out. So Jesus, how many loaves do you have? So we analyze why did he do that? We now realize they changed kingdoms. He blessed it. They changed jurisdiction. The kingdom of heaven could multiply the bread. Previous, it could not because that bread was legally within the hands of, of men. God had no legal jurisdiction to multiply it until they gave it to him willingly. All right, so verse 39, then Jesus directed them to sit down in groups. They sat down. In hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves, the two fish, looking up to heaven, he gave thanks. Some versions say he blessed it and broke the loaves. Then he gave it to his disciples and they divided it. They all ate and were satisfied and 12 baskets left over. Now, 12 baskets left over was more than they started with. And right now, you ever heard those like, you know, stop everything, the record scratch? <laughs> stop everything. See, if your head's not doing that right now, make it do that. Just think, think that sound. Just stop. <laughs> because as a spiritual scientist, you have just seen something happen that you need clarification. 
because you need to have that same process, the same kingdom laws operating in your life, right? Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.